Berlin. Radio Berlin 88.8. Hey Music mit Jürgen Jürgens. It's a long time ago that we haven't seen, but it's uh, much longer than oh yeah, it started. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about uh, the start, because uh, I think it was really by luck uh, that there was no other who could sing that high, that this great career could start. No, I won't say it was by luck. Uh, actually, uh, the Rocky Baby was recorded... Um, by Rick Finch and Harry Wayne Casey, who became Capes in the Sunshine Band. But uh, Casey couldn't sing the song because it was, it was, the key was a little too high for him when he cut the track. And so I was lucky enough because of my high voice, and Rick remembered me singing uh, some other songs. I did a couple of CDs before when I first signed my contract with uh, Austin Production. And I heard my high voice, and he remembered my high voice there. Then it said he had when he cut it, cut the track, uh, "Rock Your Baby." He said that's a good vocal. That be George can sing this because he got the high voice. Casey, so Rick came to me and asked me to sing. Would I be interested in singing the track? I told him yes. Let me hear it, and and the rest is history. And from that day on, you've been a sex symbol, I think. At the time, <laughs> I didn't realize I was a sex symbol. Really, it's unbelievable. All I want to do is record a great song. I had no idea it was going to be that big a hit that it was. And yes, I became a sex symbol. But I didn't realize that until uh, and then when the glory day was finally kind of over. Then it dawned on me how, how sex I was on television. And hearing stories about uh, all women from every walks of life had my centerfold up on the walls and they in the room and and they really uh idolized me you know so I, I say wow i had no idea the influence of it's the way uh how you move on stage and uh, i think it was very typical i have never seen anybody else to be that smooth in uh, the moves Oh yeah, I was you know yeah I would think I was I was one of the one first one to do that because it was like you see Fred, Prince for instance God bless God bless his soul and rest in peace mm -hmm. how Prince uh, was doing that and we went to basically the same kind of school because um, I learned soul music and I watched um, James Brown for instance because I toured with James Brown and and some other artists. <laughs> And um, I had a choreographer uh, who taught me a few moves, moves too, along with the, with, with the music. He said, George, you should do this with it. It'll fit it'll, it'll break your belly, you know, when you do a little move like this. So I picked that up too, and I cut my own feel to it, and that's what it was. And there's a song you did that influenced John Lennon to do a song, Whatever Gets Us Through the Night. Yes. I was really surprised about that I was surprised about that too you know <laughs> when I heard John Lennon say that about me say yeah I said oh, unbelievable it was a a big honor because John Lennon was uh, actually he was my favorite Beatle I love them all but he was my favorite one I love him he was some one fantastic heavy songs I really love his songwriting yeah And another one uh, from the Rolling Stones you worked with as well oh crap you're right I'll be a Wyman Uh, we did it. Uh, I was singing then. Uh, we were background singers in Miami, Florida. Uh, Betty Wright, uh, my ex-wife Gwen McRae, and myself. We was the background soul singers for recording artists. These are called from Criteria to come do background vocals for artists. Called us for uh, in TK Records. So we in that area. We were the the background vocals at the time. And Bill Wyman came and he uh, recorded his Monkey Grip album album there. And that's uh, that's us doing the background vocals on that album, Monkey Group. Do you have any connections I, to them till today? Or? Oh yeah, I remember. And, and um, I think I would build a, a couple of, a couple of years ago. He was on tour, I think uh, one year ago, 
He was on tour, and I went to see him. And it was like yesterday, you know. Hey, George, how you doing? Good to see you again. Hey, you know. And I was surprised too. I said, you still remember me? He said, yeah, sure. My Monkey Grip album, of course. You know, you and Better Rat and your ex-wife, Gwen. Yeah, and he was still so positive and still so down to earth and still have it at his age. It's unbelievable. And we have to talk about uh, a girl that we all knew in Germany because she was the first naked girl on television uh, presenting uh, Fa. Uh, yeah, she wasn't naked. Oh, completely naked. She was topless. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, yes. And she also was a Fa Einzer of a case of yeah. Holland at the time, yeah. too. Yeah, the Fa commercial. When I first uh, came to Germany, I saw her on the television here in Munich, in the hotel, and I couldn't believe it, because we don't have that in America, you know, in the States, you know, see the top this girl come out, I said, I cannot believe that, and she was so beautiful, I said, what a beautiful woman, what a, so I, I said, I gotta take a photo of this off the television, and I had a Polaroid camera, in I was, days. yeah, in those days, yeah, and so uh, I put, you know, put a uh, clip in, I'm gonna wait. And when the commercial came back on again, I started clicking. That's good. Oh, I got it. ten shots. Boom, I got it. Oh, I got it. Oh, like, hope I got it. And, I, and then when I developed, when it developed, I said, Yeah, wow, I got it. I got it. But it all, but it had uh, lines running through it because uh, it was uh, the speed of the television was 220 over here, yeah. and mine was um, NSTC, you know, from the states. Well, anyway. Never the same color. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was. So, but one came out pretty well. You know, had enough to go back and say, "Show, sure, gotta show this picture right here to my, to my boys." And say, they will not believe what's going on. And, oh, you're a German man, so you gotta go. He's you gotta crazy go. German, yeah, yeah. Wow, you know. <laughs> and so, um, I had the uh, I kept it, you know, with me in my briefcase all the time. And so when I came back over. I had the same briefcase with me, so I still have it right now today. And when I came over uh, in 1988, that's when I first met her. And she was the uh, manager of a casino in Landgraf, Netherlands. And she had booked uh, some stars there before me. I had no idea. And uh, she had a, a photo album. And she opened it, so I walked over to her and said, uh, who's in the photo album? You know, she said, oh, Rod Stewart. I said, Rod Stewart? What, Rod? He said, Rod Stewart, Rod Stewart was here last week. And you're here this week. I said, in this casino here? He said, yeah. I said, before then, it was Gloria Gaynor. I said, get out of here. I said, yeah. And before then, it was Demise Russo. I said, no, no, no. Yeah. And so I, I thought it was just a, they just booked me uh, in the casino just to be booked in this casino. And I said, oh, God, I got to really perform now because uh, I have some uh, big stars behind me. I cannot, I cannot have step night, you know. So I went out and did a superb, superb show. And uh, after that, I asked her, um, it was uh, uh, December the 22nd. And so after that show, I had the whole weekend off because we're going into Christmas time. So I was in this hotel where I was staying at the time. So I asked her, say, uh, I have a few days off. Say, would you mind if I, if I come to your house to watch some uh, video movies? Do you have a video? He said, sure, I have a video. And say, and sure, you can come to my house. We go rent some video. You can watch it. I said, are you sure? Are you serious? He said, no, here's my telephone number. Call me tomorrow. I'll come pick you up. We go rent the videos. You come watch the movies. I'm going to let. Well, okay, okay, you know. So the next day, I call her up. Come pick me up. And I was waiting for the letdown. She's going to tell me she can't make it. She was being nice to me that night. And then she said, oh, sure. I'm coming pick you up. What time do I to pick you up? I said, now. She said, okay, I'll be there in 20 minutes. And then we went and rented, rented the videos, came, I started watching at the house, and then she started talking about her life, you know, what she 
wild than what she did, you know. And then she said, uh, then I did, uh, I was a far, far commercial, you know. I said, far, far green. And I looked again. I said, wait a minute. I opened my case up. I said, look here. You, you're the girl here on this right here when I first met. I took a picture with you back in 1975 in the hotel in Munich. And you see, that's me. I, my mouth, just, I cannot believe it. I said, here I am. I said, I could never. I said, you were the, one, the beautiful woman I've ever seen in my whole life. And here you are now, you know, with me. I say, I, I can, how blessed can I be? You know, and, and, and since then, we've been together for 28 years. Beautiful story. So, after all these years, you can say you're a lucky guy. Yes, I am. Very, very lucky. You're living uh, half of uh, the time uh, till today in the Netherlands and half of the time on a beautiful island. Yes, I am. I'm living in uh, Aruba and the Netherlands and sometime in America, in my hometown. Because I go Florida. back to yeah, Florida to visit my family because my family still live there. And so, so three places, actually. But the majority of the time is Aruba and the Netherlands. And you're always on stage. Uh, not uh, so much, but uh, you're, you're steady on. Yes, till I'm, today. I'm still, uh, perform busy. Yeah, I'm still, yeah, I'm still performing. I'm still uh, uh, busy, yes. And, of course, making a brand new CD, album, love. That's But the last album, uh, when we met, I think that uh, it's quite a long time ago that yeah, you had about, an album out. It about seven years ago, I think. Yeah. I think it was Time for Change was that was that uh, that that uh that CD then, but now I have a new album and a new day, and it's this album uh, I recorded it with live musicians. I went back to the old roots and really did my own my own thing this time, with the help of a, a young producer and a great producer and who understand really the music, and we came up. With the concept, love, and uh, we have 14 songs on this album. It's fantastic, and I wrote the song. The text was I picked about my past life, you know, and um, my life now, you know, being happy with. And but all the music is all up happy music about it, you know. Yes, it's uh, really back to the roots, a little bit to the beginning, but uh, the technique is uh, different. Yes. And so the sound is... A new school better. sound. Sound of new school sound. Old school feel. So I really call the mixture of that is now old school, new school, future school. Uh, Is it right that you said that uh, you never have been able to write songs? Uh, others could this better, you said. But on this album, uh, uh, you're a part of yes, the ones who yes, yes. did the songs. Yes. Um, I uh, some, song, some of the songs, I wrote the full text to it. Other songs in it, uh, Roger wrote the text. Mm -hmm. And some of the songs, we co-wrote the text together so it fits the whole the whole project and uh it turned out beautiful and um i have some favorite songs all the songs that i did on it is my all my favorites so it's difficult for me to say this song is my favorite that song is my favorite because all the songs is, is personal to me you know. a different thing uh, about this is there one that is the most private the most intimate song Because of the lyrics, maybe. The private one is um, I I wrote uh, for my um, uh, wife. I like to sing "We Got Love." That's the first single from it. We got love, 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 love. I'm waiting here for you, baby, for you to come back to me. I got the table made for two now with all my loving ready to be served. 
There's one special one that I wrote for my uh, ex-girlfriend, almost wife. And I call that Rosanna. And uh, what happened when I wrote this song, um, Roger and I was at, Roger was at my home, listened to songs, and then he put this track on. And at that time, the telephone rang. My wife called me to tell me Rosanna was on the telephone. Because we good friends anyway, you know, because I have a, we have a, a child together, Marcella. And she was very famous too, uh, on television here in, in Holland, Netherlands. In, not in Netherlands, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, in Holland. Mm-hmm. Uh, Holland. Germany. Well, anyway, and um, the idea was uh, when when I spoke to Rosanna on the telephone, I came back upstairs. I said, right, that's my, that was my ex-girlfriend, you know. And we were talking about my daughter, you know. At the time, we was having a small little problem with my daughter. So, okay, we'll fix it. And then I just started, uh, he had hit the track, and I just started singing, Rosanna, you used to be my girl. I remember you used to be my world. I don't know what happened, why we parted, but I was left with a broken heart. And, um, and Roger said, George, we got to keep that. We got to keep that. We got to say that for. And then Roger took the you know, track home and everything, and we finished. He sent it back to me by the internet because we had the same tools we worked with uh, on Cubase. And uh, I finished putting the finished putting the text to it. He went home and arranged arranged it, and then he sent it back to me. Then I put the text to it and arranged the background vocals that's on it, you know. And for later on, for uh, for the, for major production of it, and this is how we work. So it's, it's fantastic. And yes, it's. I think when I listen to what you tell me about it, and uh, I see the glance in your eyes, yeah. uh, I see how proud you are of uh, what you did uh, oh, yes. with this, is this album. So, toy, toy, toy. All oh, the best for this production but, and for you. But I'm so happy because it's not only me. I've played it for a lot of people, and the feedback that I received from it already is so positive, you know. And mm-hmm. everybody tell me very positive things about it, no negative. I say, there's any one song you don't like? You say, George, the more we play the song, we play this song here, and then the next song is better, and then the next song is better, and this song is better. It's It's for all types of moods, you know. And then when I hear the women tell me, like, it's like a, it's a sigh of relief. They can breathe, make you relax. It's, and it's so romantic. It's so easy listening. It's so confident to hear, you know. So you say, even then when we dri- have an hour car, we drive, when I'm driving and I hear your CD, it's, It's so relaxing. It's so peaceful. It's so indescribable, you know. And I think it's a, a real good idea to know that uh, with your kind of music you did over the years, so many uh, people will have been together, fell in love. Yes. Uh, I think you... And also there have been many reactions like this over oh yeah. the years. Also increased the population. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, they did not give you the the title sir or something like this for you for what you have done for the population. Oh yes, they would call me the the ambassador of love. So. so that's a good title for me, the ambassador of love. Uh, do I, may, may I sit, uh, or do I have to stand up now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you sit. <laughs> um, you're a little bit over seventy, I know. Shh, shh. But uh, this year is terrible, I think. So many. Uh, that have been so famous in yeah. pop and rock music have passed away. And uh, it's terrible. Uh, I, I have fears that this year uh, will not end uh, without... 
No. Having more me, people. Me, I hope, knock on wood. Yes. I'm still around. But uh, I think it's not a, uh, a question of age. Because uh, I think uh, over there uh, they want to have a good party uh, and they put just uh, a few musicians together oh, they call for, for, them, the, yeah. for the next party uh, yeah. to have over there. Uh, but being at this age, do you think often about that there is an end? Or do you tr I don't try think to refuse it? No, I don't think about it. There's an end for all of us. And everyone have their end. But I think for me, uh, I was told this in a way a long time ago that uh, I have a long life. I will be around for a long time to come. I might live to be 95 to 100, you know. I pray. If I don't, you know, at least I said I tried. <laughs> so I cross fingers. Yes. <laughs> When I was very young, uh, I didn't want that uh, someone would tell me this, uh, but there came uh, a guy, I was sitting there, and, and he took my hand and, uh, and said, oh, I'm sorry, you're not getting very old. And that's the reason why I'm uh, very, uh, uh, for God's sake, uh, he, mm -hmm. he wasn't right. Now I'm over 60 and uh, it's uh, but quite not, enough. <laughs> yeah, but you're not old though. It's better than uh, yeah, you don't, you still you don't like get you, old. You still like a young man, you know, you're still. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so I wish you all the best. Uh, thank you. Uh, for everything you do. And I hope that this uh, record, because it's a very strange time for presenting new material, you never know what will happen. Yeah, but this is the material that that they want and they've been waiting for. All they got to do is just play it on the radio and the people will let you know. It's just like Rock Your Baby. George is back.